three tips to observe when communicating in marriage. I like to use a um, passage, three passages of scripture very quickly, because God is big on communication. God is big on communication within the context of marriage. First passage here, Matthew 12 and verse 37. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. This highlights the importance of choosing well the words that we allow to drip from our lips. It is not so much what people say about us, but it is what we say. It is the words that proceed from our mouth that will determine who we really are. Oh, the Bible reminds us again that what? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. It is your words, it is our words that demonstrate, that reveal who we really are. So forget about what people want to say about us or against us. What is important is how you answer. Amen. It is how we respond. It is the words that proceed from our mouth that's either going to make us happy or going to make us sad. So Matthew 12, verse 37. The next passage here is 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 33. Here the Bible reminds us that what evil communication corrupts good manners. Oh, that's important. Evil communication corrupts good manners. So the big question is, who are you hanging around? Who are you hanging around? For like a stream that passes through a, a piece of land, the earth, the stream that passes through the land, the stream at the head, the water was clean, but at the bottom, what happened? The water gets dirty. Why? The water partakes of particles of the soil as it passes down through the land. And so it is, friends, who we communicate with, who we hang out with, our closest friend. We have a way of, of reflecting the habits, the characteristics of our friend, just like the water that passes through the land. Who are we hanging around? Because guess what? The wrong company can cause even our communication to be distorted. Evil communication corrupt good manners. Other passage here is Ephesians 4 and verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying. Whenever we speak, it should be to build up. Hello today. That's what the word edify really mean. Notice the word comes from the word from which we get edifice, a building. So when we talk about um, to edify, it is to build up. Our words should build up, not tear down, to encourage, not to discourage. Our words should build up those around us. And within the context of marriage, to elevate, to build up the esteem of our spouse and children. Always words to affirm, words to validate, and words to build up. And so the Bible speaks to our hearts today about the importance of communication in marriage. <clears throat> and so very briefly, um, just observe these three tips, friends. Number one, when you, when you are in a marriage, number one, you must communicate. 
That's the first point I want to share today as we break down uh, the concept of communication. In marriage, the first point we remember, we must communicate. Amen. Watch this, friends. Everybody has a primal need to be heard. When we cannot talk in our marriage, we feel suffocated. And so in our marriage, we should create an atmosphere that is open to communication. No stonewalling. Hello today. No stonewalling. Some people, when they want to talk, it's as though they are up against a brick wall. Or the other person saying, don't talk about it. Forget it. Don't touch it. How can you not touch it if it concerns the other person? Oh, why should you sweep it under the carpet when it concerns the emotion of the other person? If it's important to them, it's important. So let's talk about it. Amen. There's nothing about, about sweeping it under the carpet. No, if it's important to your spouse, then encourage the conversation. Use words that encourage. Oh, I didn't understand that you feel you felt that way. Oh, are you saying that you were hurt by that? Okay. You reflect feelings, you reflect emotion, you reflect, you, you reflect the thought of the person. You use encouragers. Oh, okay. It's all about encouraging conversation. Why? A person must talk. For when we talk, friends, we have a primal need to be heard. And in many marriages, many friends go to bed and they feel suffocated. For the, the other spouse will not listen to them. They don't feel heard and they feel as though they are dying. Guess what? When people are not able to talk in the marriage and to express themselves, you know what the strong inclination is? The strong desire, the compelling urge is for them to go and speak to another. Why? They can't talk to you for you will not listen to them. They may want to go and speak to their mom, their dad, even a friend, even another girlfriend or boyfriend. And then you get angry. How can you do that? Oh, friends, don't push them. Hello today. No, don't push them beyond the borders of the marriage. Don't push them beyond the ambit of the relationship. And we do that when we cease to listen. Amen? So remember this. People have a primal need to be heard. And so we must encourage communication in marriage. Amen? Oh, it may not be something you want to hear about. Oh, it hurts so badly. I don't want to hear it. No, friends. If it's in the heart of your spouse, they must find an audience. They must be able to give expression to their heart. So allow conversation in the marriage. That's how you heal your spouse. Amen. No, that's not. So number one, we must communicate. That's it. We must communicate. Now, why do people communicate? By the way, why do people communicate? Number one, people communicate to sort their thoughts. There's so much happening in their minds. Friends, it's as though their brain is about to explode. And so they talk to sort their thoughts. Okay. Oh, they're always, especially ladies, they, they think aloud. And so guess what, friends? It is not always you they're coming against. So don't take it personally all the time. Amen. Just allow them to talk. 
for they talk to sort their thoughts. Okay. Number two, uh, are, are, um, B, okay, in, in, in number one. We had A, now it's B. Why do people talk? They talk to connect. Amen. They communicate to connect with you. Remember the days of courtship. You may even didn't have any physical contact with each other. But you're always on the phone. Why were you always talking to each other like that? Because you had to connect. You talk to connect with each other. As a matter of fact, even long distant relationships. Did you know, friends, that long distant relationships sometimes are amazing? Sometimes they even do better than others. Why? Because People spend time talking. Amen. So when they got married, guess what? They already knew each other. They connected heart to heart. They knew each other very well because they were connected through communication. So why then in marriage, you don't want to communicate? Hello, friends. Remember this. People talk to connect. So whenever your spouse makes a bid to connect with you, you listen. Amen. For you talk to connect. Amen. Sometimes it may appear as though it's not important. They say, oh, look at this bottle. Oh, you know something? I went today and I saw this bottle and I noticed it has beautiful writings on it. You don't see any reason for the writing. Why are you talking about writing? No, it's not so much to talk about the writing. They want to connect with you. Amen. So sometimes the other folk may speak things that you don't understand why. It may even be sweet nonsense. Don't brush them aside. Don't reject them. No, say, oh, okay. Oh, you mean the writings and the bottle? Okay, yeah. All right, what, is, what, what does it say? You see that? You encourage conversation. For they are talking, not so much to give information, they talk to connect with you. Amen. Remember that. And B, people talk to unburden their soul. Amen. They talk to unburden their soul. Did you know, friends, talking is like therapy. Amen. There's so much bottled up in the heart. Mm -mm -mm. Did you know, friends? That's why it is said that um, a, a, a woman, statistically, a woman outlives a man by eight years. Hello. Why is that so? It is said that the man many times bottles it up and will not talk. And friends, let me tell you when that emotion gets so strong. Oh, the heart rate rises, the blood pressure rises, and it bottles it up, friends. And it's as though the blood vessels are about to burst because he will not give vent to his emotion. Oh, friends, people talk to unburden their soul. So guess what? Even if a man will not talk in the marriage, lady, it is your job to create an atmosphere that is non-judgmental, an atmosphere that does not criticize him, an atmosphere that is non-condemnatory. So the man will feel free to talk and hence to save his life. Amen. So people talk to unburden their soul. So that's number that's eight, that's C. Let's go to point number two. You converse not to condemn, but to understand. Amen. When you are talking, you talk. You don't get on the, on the bandwagon of being mean and, and narrow-minded and condemnatory and judgmental. No. We don't talk to condemn, we converse 
to understand. Okay, okay, let's talk about it. Did you say you had an experience today? Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, it was so rough. Okay, tell me about it. You don't say, well, you always have those experiences. <laughs> oh, you can't think anything good. No, that's condemnation. You're condemning the person. No, you converse because you want to understand their experience, what they are going through, how their day was. And when you try to understand, then you can relate to them better. Amen. So watch this, friends. We converse not to condemn, but to understand. And I want to save some time for Q&A. So let's get number three. And I'm going to add number four. Number four just came to my mind. I'm going to add number four. Number three, don't raise your voice. Improve your argument. Amen. Don't raise your voice. Improve your argument. There are some people when they communicate, they want you to subscribe to their position by calling you. Hey, hello today. In other words, you don't try to call them to scare them to intimidate them into submission oh no friends you don't raise your voice you don't get somebody to obey you just because you say it oh i say it, so obey me and you raise your voice and you try to get them to obey you to embrace your perspective by shouting. Hello today. By coercion. By force. Even by physical abuse. Some people try to get others to obey them by abuse. Friends, you know God? God does not get us to obey him by force. God gets us to, uh, to love him, to obey him by wooing us with his love. Amen. Okay, so we win the affection of our spouse. We woo them to us. Amen. When we try to win each other, when we try to get others to obey us, okay, by force. Friends, we are trying to make a robot out of our spouse, amen, okay? We try to get them to obey us by being a robot. No, we don't want people just to be reflectors of our thoughts, no. We want to create thinkers in our spouse, even children. We want to create thinkers, so we want them to think and analyze things and then to follow. Then they grow up to be more intelligent people, Amen? So, watch this now, friend. Don't raise your voice. Improve your argument. Communication is about persuasion. So if you want to win them over to your perspective, do some research. Get the facts and talk to them in a way where you can convince them that your position is worth embracing. So remember, communication is persuasion. Amen. Don't raise your voice. Improve your argument. And finally, I want to talk about this now. Number four. I want to just interject number four here. You must be able to disagree without being disagreeable. Amen. <laughs> oh, friends, you must learn to disagree without being disagreeable. Oh, I don't like what he said. So I'm not going to talk to him again for the next two days. I'm going to malice him. Christians don't keep malice, okay? And we don't hold grudge. Christian maturity dictate that we can disagree without being disagreeable. <laughs> we don't like what he said. It runs contrary to our perspective. We can still disagree without being disagreeable. We, they are still our friends. Don't take things so personal. Amen. Don't be so personal about everything. You disagree, but you can still be friends. Amen. So friends, watch this now. Remember now, 
one of the things a talk show host of mine in Jamaica would normally say, you know, he said, remember this, that the mouth is made to say anything. <laughs> Hello, friends. Sometimes we forget that. Anything can proceed out of somebody's mouth. So why would you allow your life to be plunged into misery simply because somebody says something? Hello today. A mouth can say anything. You wake up tomorrow and, and, and somebody calls you with something and they say, oh, I heard that you did this. I heard that this happened and you're not good. And then your whole day is plunged into depression. Hello, friends. No. God wants us to be stronger than that. If we are to be mighty for God, we're going to be stronger than that. Hello today. We don't allow every little thing, you know, uh, every little thing just to sink us. No. As it come against us, you know, we shake it off. We forgive. And we move on. We are still friends. Hello today. So finally, watch this now. We must learn to what? To disagree without being disagreeable. May God bless us today as we reflect upon these words and we be strong Christians for him. Amen. Amen.